feed me more. Wrestling born in an Asian. This show's over because it's different. You know what I mean? And now it's time for a conversation with the big guy, pal. <laughs> Welcome to Conversation with the Big Guy. I am the Big Guy Ryback, and I'm sitting here with the third wheel, Asian Joe. My one and only isn't here again this week, Phoenix Marie. She is uh, working. Yeah, she is working. She's a working gal these days. Yes. And the real working gal. Handling, and, handling penises. He, she's, <laughs> <laughs> no, she. Uh, we're going to actually be doing a Dr. Phoenix segment with her. Uh, after you leave, you got bowling later on. I do quick. have bowling uh, in ball. Uh, I wish I was in your bowling league. Well, I don't want to add anything. But you've been so busy, so otherwise I would I would ask you to join my league or join my team. I would I honestly, but but the, with the shoulder, I, I I would like to just go bowling with us yeah. together. Still, that's something that is needs to be done. But we got Ace Mike Malero, my main man. That is a uh, like I've said week in and week out. He's out in the trenches. He's getting all the dirt. It's still real to me, damn it! <laughs> and uh, he's our wrestling analyst joining us today. Mike, how you doing? Good. How you guys doing tonight? Doing good. Doing, doing good. good. Thank you for joining us on Conversation with the Big Guy. This is the uh, the reception to uh, featuring the wrestling news has been quite positive, I must say. And it's uh, I can't thank you enough for, for coming on and joining us every week and and uh, giving us the uh, updates on what's going on in the world of wrestling, WWE, and, and everywhere oh. else. Oh, thank you guys for having me. It's been great. No, likewise. I actually just did the Two Man Power Trip Wrestling podcast last night, and uh, I, I, I really enjoyed it. They're very nice guys, and uh, we were scheduled to do like twenty twenty five, and we did like forty five minutes. So they, uh, <laughs> I could have talked to them a lot longer, but I'm a real chatty Kathy. So yes, you are. <laughs> you get me. You get me. You just start. You get the words coming. I can't stop. <laughs> hi, hi. How are you? What's going on? With you? Yeah. <laughs> all right, uh, Mike. All right, Ace. What's going on in the wrestling world this week? All right, let's hop in with the biggest story in the week. Daniel Bryan back in the WWE on Tuesday afternoon. WWE made the surprising announcement: Daniel Bryan's been cleared to return to action. SmackDown opened with Daniel Bryan talking about how hard it's been since he was forced to retire two years ago. He thanked his supporters, especially his wife Bree, for not letting him give up. Keep him fighting for his dream. Daniel Bryan didn't waste much time getting back in the ring. As SmackDown ended, he fired Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Uh, they attacked Daniel, who immediately showed he was still the same high-speed, fearless competitor he's always been. Uh, really, I thought we'd never see Daniel Bryan back in the WWE ring. I thought, you know, he'd be wrestling, but I never thought he'd be back in WWE. So uh, I'm very happy to see him. Yeah, that was when you sent me that. You because you'll send me you'll send me the the emails with 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 big wrestling news and say come in during the week. And I saw that I was like, whoa. I I didn't think that was going to happen. At least my it, I kind of thought he was probably done in WWE, and that if his contract expired, he would probably go wrestle elsewhere. That was based off of how long this has been, because it seems like he's been in his mind he's been well for a long time. But it, it, it's when I found out what he had to do in, in the as far as challenging maroon which i'm all for that like i it, i think it's so cool that uh he didn't accept no and i think that's a great example uh for the world to in, in that that sometimes things if we don't like something it's not it's not necessarily going to turn around overnight but if you work hard enough and you you are diligent and you keep a positive mindset and grateful key word from that whole promo was grateful which i was really really happy to hear him say that he he learned for things to be grateful for during all of this, and uh, good things can happen to good people, and he's a prime example of that. That is, uh, he had to go and, and get uh, the opinions of multiple doctors, top brain experts, and, and wait. So what was why did, was he out? He had he's had a lot of concussions throughout his career. Oh yeah, that's serious. And. Uh, he he he's had some some injuries and uh, WWE wouldn't clear him after the last round when I was still there. Okay, and um, 
he, uh, I, I, I can clear. It, it's been quite frustrating for him because all he want he loves wrestling. Yeah, he, like, that's all he's ever done. So he had that taken away, and um, I remember I saw him at Rusev's wedding last year, and uh, he was doing. I don't know if he was GM then or he was doing something on as a TV role only, and I could just see like he was. It was really tough for him because to go to TV and be around all the other wrestlers. And like you can't do it, mm-hmm. or you know you can do it, but you're being told you can't right, do it. Right, right. it. It was it was frustrating for him, I, I'm sure. And so, as you saw on SmackDown, I thought he looked great. Um, he did, yeah. It, it looked like he hasn't missed a beat. But um, I would have, <laughs> and I actually was talking about this with the two man podcast guys. The um, thought he could have eased, they could have eased him into maybe a little. Uh, a little, <laughs> the power bottom of the apron yeah. wasn't a good idea. <laughs> um, they uh, that and I, I thought it just you know a, a beatdown would have been more than sufficient. But I was happy like the yes kicks got the the best reaction out of everything, and then uh, and then seeing him do the running drop kicks in the corner where uh, he took some pretty nasty falls again, and he's in street clothes and um, but again. Daniel Bryan only knows one speed, and that, that's what the people love about him, I think, because he's that underdog that, that is just that he's going to scratch and claw, and he's just a, a gritty, gritty old soul in the ring. And uh, he he looked great, but the power bomb on the apron, I was like, well, I guess they're going to find out how good his brain is right away. <laughs> That's if all you know, a, a power bomb in the middle of the ring, I thought would have been sufficient since that's a finish, um, but. Yeah, it's. I'm happy for him. It's. It's. I think, and I think everybody is. Yeah. Um, one thing we talked about a lot in the past is, uh, if a WF performance seems as bad, it's because the, uh, it's a spot the WF put him in. What about someone like Daniel Bryan? I mean, do you think the WF ever expected Daniel Bryan was going to get this level? I mean, he has a ton of natural charisma, a ton of in-ring talent, but you know, he reached a level very few people had before. A couple years ago at the Royal Rumble, uh, people were actually booing because he wasn't in the ring. I mean, you never thought you'd see Batista and Rey Mysterio get booed just for the fact they weren't uh, Daniel Bryan, you know? Yeah, I think he's one of the uh, rare the the rare exceptions to the rule. Um, I've heard Dan, and Dan's told me before, many years ago, this is when he was when he was quite hot. I don't know if it was at his hottest, but I remember him... He was he was pretty damn hot, and uh, it was in between that 2012, 13 period, and uh, and I remember him saying in his mind he didn't feel like a, like a star like The Rock or people like that as far as I think maybe based off of his size, but I don't think people I think people Daniel Bryan has this endearing quality about him. Um, and it's one of those it's a rare exception to the rule. Not to say. I, I think sometimes it's harder for smaller guys to to get mainstream appeal, but I think he has all that ability, and I think it, it's just and I think it just the people, they're the ones that tell you, and I think WWE realizes that now, that he is a larger than life on screen uh, presence for them, and uh, and he's a good person, so I don't know if Dan ever thought he would be this big or WWE ever thought he would. But I think based off of the feedback and the reception and the interaction that this is, you know, gathered, garnered, garnered, is that the correct word? Gathered, I think. Gone. I was garnered. going to say gathered, but I feel like garnered. Garnered. Yeah. Garnered? yeah. It could be completely wrong. Big dumb Ryback. But he, uh, no, I think, I, I think he is a big time star. And um, I think everyone is polling for him because he is such a, he's such a good guy. That's why it, it's really hard to hate him. Even though it, it really is. Has and he the, ever yeah. played like a villain? Like he a, has, he, yeah. Okay. And he does a great job at it. Yeah. But it's, I think it's it's just easier to cheer the guy. Okay. Especially considering what he's been through. Mm-hmm. And, and now granted, a year from now, if he's back and he and he remains healthy, you could always turn him again. Like maybe that then it would work really well again. But right, right now, he, I mean, he's just as big of a baby face, a good guy you can get. Okay, that's good. All right, let's uh, jump into Hulk Hogan. <laughs> there have been right. a lot of rumors this uh, that the WS working with Hulk. There have been a lot of rumors the WS is going to be working with Hulk Hogan again since he died down from the various scandals he'd been involved in. The WF actually released the following statement to PW Insider: 
We've had discussions with Terry Balea, a.k.a. Hulk Hogan, about how he can help others learn from his mistakes. However, he's not currently under a WF contract, a WWE contract. Yeah, I think that's good news. I think that's a step in the right direction. And uh, I think if he wants to be involved in WWE again, in, in working with them, and they have interest in working with him, it, is I'm sure no doubt they do. I, I think with them, the biggest thing now is being a public company and having major sponsors. It, it's all based off of kind of what their feedback is with WWE. It, and that's something that WWE is going to have to discuss with the individual sponsors. And But the, here's the one thing with humans. As much as humans like to hate people and see people fail and fall, the other thing that humans are really, really good at is forgiving. Um, and, and everybody, I, and that's one thing that you see happen time and time again. You'll see these people that, that have made mistakes and they'll, they'll receive a ton of backlash. But at the end of the day, after time heals all wounds. And uh, you want to see the comeback and you want to forgive. And I think that that is what you're going to see with Hulk Hogan because he's done so much to put WWE on the map and where they are. He is one of the cornerstones uh, of that company. So uh, as far as getting them the mainstream attention and, and into the level that they are at. So I think Vince will always forever uh, be grateful to Hulk Hogan um, and, and likewise, Hulk will always be grateful for Vince because it is a partnership. So, uh, I, I think it's, that's a step in the right direction. And I, and I would love to see, uh, the fences, the fence be mended in this situation. Yeah. I mean, he's a, he was one of my favorite wrestlers. Who um, doesn't love, I mean, he's, yeah. but, and then uh, Andre the Giant, it was like, yeah, it's, it uh, I think everybody, every kid. So it's, uh, it's cool. And I've met him several times and. He's a big believer in the the law of attraction and the secret, and it's uh, people make mistakes. And again, he had in, you you tap into anybody's personal life, you could find anything on anybody. Oh yeah, and, sure. and everybody. The other thing humans like to do is critique the fuck out of other humans, mm -hmm. and it's everybody does and says things. And and he had personal conversations put out there, not to say they were right, because they weren't. But it, it, it's. Sometimes when you're in the privacy of your own home and you, you say and do things because you know you're in that, you're in the private situation. And um, it was an unfortunate incident. And I know he's probably, he's been deeply apologetic and um, and people do and say things sometimes. It, it's mistakes are made. So uh, I think this is a good thing for, for Hulk. Yeah, I, I hope to see him back. I mean, it's sort of not the WWE without Hulk, you know? Absolutely. All right, let's move on. To... Sorry, Mike. Hey, so right, let's move oh. on to uh, Matt versus Bray. Did you get a chance to see the ultimate? Yeah, I'm here. The, the ultimate deletion was that what it was? Yeah, did you get a chance? Yeah, did you get to see ultimate deletion uh, this on Monday? I did get to see. I think we had a little technical difficulties there. Is that? Did you hear him already, Asian Joe? Yeah, I hear him. Okay, yeah, okay, just checking. Yeah, the ultimate deletion. I, I did catch that on Monday. I caught a little bit of raw. And uh, what did you? Uh, did you have any feedback on that, Ace? I liked it. Uh, you know, it had a great, real gritty feel to it. It almost felt like you know backyard wrestling in the WWE. Uh, I liked we saw Jeff at, at the at the end after we talked about his problems last week. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, at the end, Bray was talking. Uh, it seemed like the fans' response has been pretty positive, too. It was definitely different than anything they had been on WF TV. And, you know, I think we're at least going to get one more match between Matt and Bray at WrestleMania. So, uh, and, you know, I think, I think in the long run, I think this will probably end up with Matt and teaming up with Bray at some point. But I think the match itself was pretty cool. I think that would, that's the vibe that it gives off, is that they're going to join forces at some point, which would be pretty, I think that would be pretty entertaining. And I think that would be a good change of pace for Bray, who's been a singles competitor primarily up until this point. Um, I think that that would, that would give uh, them an opportunity to maybe do some funnier things with Bray as well to show, because Bray is a, a very charismatic, funny human being. Um, and, and he has, there's many layers to the Bray Wyatt character that, that are not tapped into yet. So I think that would be, with with Matt, because Matt is is a little more out there even than Bray with the character development stuff, and I think that would be a, a really cool scenario with the two of them. Um, but yeah, I caught it. I know what you're talking about on the backyard wrestling feel, uh, as far as with the ring, it just with the vibe. That's exactly what it kind of came off with outside of everything else. But I 
I thought it was different. And again, it, it, they go by the ratings. And if the ratings were good for that, which I believe they were all right, weren't they? It's going to be, yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah. And I, that fits into everything with the with Matt Hardy and his character that he's done. So it was uh, with before. So, yeah, I think it, it, it's just another step in, in the with this story. And uh, I'm looking forward to see where that goes because I, I like both those guys. So. Yeah, same here. Uh, this week, uh, Mark Henry was named to the WWE Hall of Fame. Uh, Mark Henry's journal, journey in professional wrestling, uh, professional sports, began in the world of power wrestling, powerlifting. He defeated in 1992 and 1996 Summer Olympics and won gold, silver, and bronze medals at the, the Pan Am Games in 1993. His unbelievable power caught the eye of WWE officials who signed him to become a superstar in 1996. Henry excelled inside the squared circle as a member of the Nation of Domination, as I also became the notorious ladies' man known as Sexual Chocolate <laughs> during WWE's Attitude Era. Soon, though, Henry would discover a mean streak. Soon, though, Henry would discover a mean streak like no other and unleash his rage on the WWE roster. His opponents weren't just beaten down; they were inducted into the Hall of Pain. Henry continued continued competing with WWE through WrestleMania 33, whilst taking on a new role as a talent scout and mentor. Uh, to be honest, a lot of Mark Henry's success came when I wasn't watching wrestling, so uh, I was a little surprised when they announced him, but. You know, uh, I didn't even know he was done being an active wrestler. But you know, the last week you've been seeing a lot of stories about how much how much the other wrestlers respected him and how much he's been doing to help out the talent, and uh, it made a lot more sense. <laughs> Just before I came on, actually, I saw Big Show and Mark Henry were on Twitter, and they were doing a fundraiser for Special Olympics with the tagline of "Open your wallets, you're going to get took." <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's again. Yeah, I, I, you're not going to find a lot of people that badmouth Mark Henry. Um, one, he's an extremely large, strong human being. Like he's. A whole other level of. I saw that match on YouTube. Oh, did you go back him. and watch yeah, it? Yeah, I love when you talked about like when he grabbed <laughs> falling the on rope. my face. Oh my god! But, dude, I, you talk about stress after wrestling. It, like you get more tired wrestling a guy that size because yeah. everything takes more energy yeah. with a guy that size. And uh, <laughs> it was a uh, stressful fucking day. Yeah, I was like, all right, the, here, we're gonna have a large guy. Yeah, lay on you. <laughs> You're gonna fall. <laughs> And he, you got it. And he took he he actually is he's extremely extremely good with his body. Yeah, I didn't feel anything off of that by the God, way because he that, fell on his knees. Yeah, and he didn't fall on me. I know. Which if he would have like he could have just squished he, me. He could have killed you. Yeah, would have been on my neck and head. I would have yeah. been done. Um, no, I, I'm extremely happy for Mark. He's so he's kind of been done for the last like two or three years, maybe two years, maybe maybe three, where they kind of like. It might even be longer, where the the running story was he his contract was up every year, and like Vince would always get him to another year, and like he would go in there to like tell Vince that he was like done, and that and the, Vince would somehow talk him into another year, and uh, Mark would kind of like would tell everyone I'm done, I'm done, and then Mark like uh, three months would be go by and we're like what's going on? Oh, I resigned for another year, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, he got Vinced every year, but he no, he's everyone <laughs> likes Mark and. He, uh, I always enjoyed wrestling him and, uh, I wrestled him on a lot of live events over the years and he, uh, he was always really, really good with me and he's, uh, he's just a nice human being and he's, he's a large human being. I always tell, I'm really big on those hand grips. I say, this is how, how you know how strong this guy is at my best, a level three on the captain to crush when I'm fucking on, like that is my max and, and it's. It's not to say that maybe I could do more over time if I really, but that that's my max, just my kind of where I'm at. And Mark Henry, I think, could do like a level four, like nothing, like which is huh. just hundreds of pounds. Like I think yeah. it's like a hundred and something pounds more of pressure, but he can do it like upside down, and like oh, he's one of the only few humans that can do that. That's uh, and uh, I don't know about if he can. I've heard the stories of him bending like frying pans and things that you just were like, what? Yeah. That he's that. Le- it's like a whole other. <laughs> It's a whole. I mean, other this level. guy can kill people with his bare hands. Yeah, like and everybody, like I think you can take somebody, like you take somebody that isn't devoted their entire life to mixed martial arts, and they are a fucking killing machine. Like I don't know if you can kill Mark Henry, <laughs> and like unless they were big enough, like yeah. he's he's that. And I and again, this is and, Mark, and I talk about when I'm talking about Mark Henry, like when he's like at his in his prime of moving, and he used to be able to like, and I, he might still be able to dunk a basketball. Like if you think about it, if you see how large he is, yeah, he's and up. I don't. I up to a certain point, he was able to still dunk a basketball. Yeah, probably still could. Mm-hmm. 
Um, uh, how I've, big, how, how tall is he? He's like six, probably, six? he's a little taller than me. He might be an inch taller, half an inch or an inch taller than me. Okay. Uh, and then he is, and he's just a massive man. Oh, yeah. Like, um, but like, he's not like, he has all this muscle on him, but his like, and he has body fat on him, but his body fat doesn't look no. like body fat on him. It's like, no. hard, it's like all hard. Yeah. Like it's like, like I used to, sometimes he, his singlet, his, his shoulders are really bad now. He'd ask. For like, can you get my singlet and take my singlet off or put my strap on for uh-huh. me? Because his shoulders, and he's he's a warrior, and like you just put it, your straps on, you just like, just like this human being, like this guy was born genetically larger than everybody else, um, and it's crazy. But he, uh, I don't know if in his prime or even like when he just if he gets angry, like how do you, how do you hurt him? What do you do? Like, if you you got to be able to take you him down. You probably can hurt him by his feelings. Yeah, this, yeah. This was like because like, Joe <laughs> Rogan, you know, Joe Rogan, he said something about it, and you know, obviously, his, Mark Henry got mad, angry about it. Yeah, no, but like you, uh, he's very Mark Henry's very. Um, he's been with WWE for a long time. He's a very loyal, uh, independent contractor to them, and he. Oh. Uh, he doesn't, and Joe, I, we talked about that. I, Joe never met, I don't think Joe met anything. No, no. Joe's a fan of wrestling, but Joe, and again, when you have a podcast and Joe has, is, and you try to be entertaining and you joke around and in this day and age, people will take anything. And, seriously. Yeah. Seriously. And Mark might've got an info, like, cause his Rogan seems to like Jimmy Superfly Snooker, but he was just talking about the splash is a ridiculous move to beat another man. And when you're talking in a real fighting sense, yeah. like I'm going to jump off this table and land on your body <laughs> and then I'm going to beat you. <laughs> like, it's pretty funny. That's so that's what he was getting at. But I, but I understand that's yeah, Joe, I, I don't know if uh, you'd have to lock in a submission, but you'd have to be able to get it on Mark. Yeah. And that's the other, uh, other thing, by the way, there was another funny backstage thing. I was working on trying to get this submission, because I remember I wanted to do a submission and I wanted to get it over on TV. And like I tr- there were two other things and I won't go into great detail, but I was told no, told no on a couple of them. And I, so I tried to figure out this new submission where you kind of wrap the arm around the back. The, I can't, it's hard to explain. I'd have to actually do it, but you take the guy's arm and kind of wrap it around his head and he's lying on his back and you reach through and you, anyways, you clinch the arm and it's kind of choking them. And then you sit up with it. Okay. And they were like, well, can you get it on Mark? And Mark was like, hey, Mark, is it cool if, like, you lie down on the back and I put a submission on you? And he's like, yeah, man. He's like, but he's cool as shit. Like, he could get the fuck out of here. It's what I do. And like, no, he was like, yeah, man. And he just came, he lies down in the locker room and, like, yeah. and I got it on him. And it was like, okay, we can do it. But then they, they didn't let me do it anyway. Uh. So, but he's a good guy. I like Mark. <laughs> What else? We uh, the got, other Ace? name we got for the Hall of Fame this year was Kid Rock. Uh, the other name we got for the Hall of Fame this year is Kid Rock. Uh, you know, he grew up a WWE fan. He's you know been pretty involved. He provided themes for Undertaker and Stacey Keebler. You know, a lot of fans argue celebrities shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame, which is you know of course a completely made up thing. But uh, I think it's a lot it makes a lot of sense to induct Kid Rock. He certainly has a strong connection. Uh, WD used his Lonely Road of Faith in one of the most memorable Desire videos they did. Yeah. Uh, one thing I've been wondering if he's going to be at Mania. Do you think if Undertaker comes back? They'll have him come back as the American Badass so the Kid Rock can play the Mute song, or that would be, oh man, the uh, that would be pretty badass if they actually did that with the band playing that, but then it, everything went dark and he comes out to his Undertaker entrance. That'd be kind of cool. I think that would be cool. Actually. That would be <laughs> uh, that would be badass, which they're probably working on right now as we speak. Um, that uh. That would be pretty cool, and especially if that's your last one. I think it would be a fucking really badass if it was a blend of all his other with the rolling everything, every version of Undertaker until the, he until they eventually everything shuts down, and then it's his 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 entrance thing that he uses now for his last entrance, but kind of almost like a recap of the Undertaker's career if it is his last one. Um, I think that would be a that would be the perfect stage to tell that story, um, and yeah, I think it makes perfect sense with celebrities. And again, it's a made up thing, right? And but it, it's good publicity for them to induct people like this because it gives them mainstream exposure, which is what they want. So rather than just doing wrestlers, 
They do celebrities that have worked with WWE, and it's their it's their um, it's the what is it the what wing is it again the celebrity wing right? Celebrity. Wing. Yeah. So they clearly state that it's not they're not being inducted as wrestlers, so nobody should take offense to it. it everyone, it, it's why. But again, people like to argue and and critique things and whatnot. It makes perfect sense from a from a business standpoint. So congratulations to Kid Rock. Anything else going on, Ace? I uh, just want to kind of keep talking about this the Undertaker thing. Uh, again, Monday was out. Monday, Cena was out again, challenging the Undertaker. This week, he called Undertaker a coward for refusing to respond to his challenge, and uh, King came out and choke slammed Cena. Uh, like I said last week, these segments kind of feel awkward still. Uh, if the end result is going to be a match with Undertaker, I, to me, I want to see the Undertaker. It's, you know, I, I, I they did this a couple years ago with uh, Punk and Jericho, where. Uh, you know, Jericho was challenging Punk for two months, and then Punk didn't show up till the pay per view. And I don't know, for me, I just like seeing that guy, you know, to build that match back and forth instead of one guy just being in the ring making the challenge week after week after week. You know? Yeah, no, but I see what they're doing is in there. It, it they're telling the story uh, is Undertaker because of the way he left uh, when he left everything in the ring as far as his uh, his jacket and hat and all that, and um, that in his mind he's done. And but Cena wants one more with them, and it, so they're kind of. Uh, we'll see how they play it out. How many weeks do we have to WrestleMania? A few more weeks, two more weeks, like two, yeah, yeah. So it, it will be, it'll be curious to see uh, how this plays out in the upcoming weeks. Um, you, you might not, I, I would imagine you're gonna have to see, the, you're gonna have to know the matches going down before WrestleMania. So that they could promote it. Otherwise, yeah. Unless they promote it as will the Undertaker show up uh, to WrestleMania deal, then 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 you know, then there's the excitement of is the Undertaker going to actually are we going to actually see this match? So it will be uh, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Again, they're just it, they gotta. I know what you mean though about people not being there and stuff. So. Because that's also going on with the Brock storyline a little bit, kind of it was. Yeah. Um, but I think we'll. I think we're going to know maybe beforehand if he is or not. Um, a couple weeks ago, we talked about this greatest Royal Rumble. Uh, WWE, WWE announced that in addition to the fifty man Rumble, there was going to be seven champi- championship matches at the greatest Royal Rumble event in Saudi Arabia: uh, the WWE Championship, the Universal Championship. Intercontinental Championship, U.S. Championship, the Raw Tag Team Titles, SmackDown Tag Team Titles, and Cruiserweight Titles. Uh, fans immediately noticed that neither of the women's titles will be defended at the show, which is because the show's in Saudi Arabia. And you know, to me, I just wonder if it's a tricky balance for WWE. You know, they want to expand their market, but they have places where you know there's limits what they can do because of you know the culture in the area. Yeah, they uh, and I've been there for that and seen that firsthand. And they, you got to play by other people's rules um, if you're going to do business with them and. There's a, uh, I forget, were they in Abu Dhabi when they were able to do the women's match earlier or last some, year? Some like yeah. Dubai or Dubai, yeah, like one that. of those where that had never happened. So it's just a matter of time, but every country, every culture is different as far as where they're at um, in, in this, in the evolution of mankind. So it's, uh, that's kind of uh, out of WWE's reach, I think, as far as any, there's only so much they can do if they, if the, if they don't want you know the women participating over there or they or if they think that there's going to be an issue if they do they're going to play it safe so there's nothing that's nothing on WWE's end I'm sure if they could have the women over there they would so sure definitely um just kind of curious uh, do they give you guys like instructions for when you go to countries like that because remember a couple of years ago they had that problem with Jericho where he was in Brazil and disrespected the flag do they like give you guys kind of you know the cultural instructions for the areas you go to or uh, there's kind of anytime you go on a tour, they kind of, they do, there'll be like a little brief meeting before you go on a tour, like a European tour or one of these tours to these other countries. Um, the, I believe there, there's something had to have been touched on before. Most of the time you kind of zone out when they're in there for those things, but you'll get usually <laughs> like a packet of, of kind of the country or the region that you're going and you can kind of, you'll kind of, when you're up there and you're busy, you'll kind of skim it over and see. But once you kind of go to a place, once you you kind of get a feel for how things are. I know personally, when we went to Iraq, 
Was it re? Uh, I can't. I'm looking at the world map and I can't see because my vision isn't 2020 anymore. So you look for Iraq? Yeah, they're one of the one of the places in Iraq. Uh, Riyadh, is it Riyadh? I don't know where they're going now, but it's uh, Asian Joe looking at the map here to give me the information. Well, there's, there's only three. It's uh, the Syria, Mosul. I think it was re. I, I want to say, but I, I apologize if I'm wrong. But anyways, when we went there, we went there for two shows, and it was the only time I've actually been to Iraq. And Did you like I, before the war, or when was this? This was a few years, maybe three and a half years ago. Okay, maybe maybe even four years ago. And time flies, shit. Um, and I remember because I remember I wrestled. I think I wrestled Sheamus in the opening match, and we had a hell of a match. I love wrestling that guy. Uh, he's <laughs> physical, and uh, it was. But I remember I worked out at the hotel. Nobody left the hotel. That was one of the places, like, usually they'll have, like, um, vans to take you to local gyms. Right. And whether this is real or not, we we were told that the place they that people get their heads cut off was down the road from where oh, we were at. Shit. Whether that was true, I don't know. Yeah. And, but you've seen, we've all seen the videos of, like, yeah. not to say that that goes, like, has nothing to do with what was going on at the time when we were there, but... It can be scary going to other places when you don't know the culture and you don't want to do anything to offend anybody else. Mm -hmm. And so I just remember they had a decent hotel gym and I remember everybody just worked out at the hotel gym for that. Nobody left the hotel. Um, but they didn't tell us like, guys, don't leave the hotel. Um, I will say though, there was one trip to India where, and, and they had us in a very nice hotel, <clears throat> but they, I think they, I don't know if it was the the location we were in, but they advised us to probably stay at the hotel okay. and only leave to go to the show. Um, so oh. as my doorbell rings, maybe that's my missed package that was delivered to the wrong address today. <laughs> but uh, oh, yeah, long story, Amazon story we'll talk about later. But yeah, I think for the most part, guys know when they go places. I remember me and Jinder Mahal were out in China once. Did I tell that story? No. I'm pretty sure oh. uh, we went to China and uh, me and Jinder went out and took a cab out. To where, a night... where, where in China? I don't even know. Oh, okay. I just remember being like feeling so lost in another country. And and, uh, and way taller uh, than every kid. You know, it felt there. like a fucking monster. <laughs> uh, we were and we went to a nightclub and yeah, that has to be as the people there. It's con that's my package. I'm positive. But okay. the uh, went to a nightclub and had drinks and like, couldn't talk to anybody because nobody spoke English. Right. And, uh, but they were like, it looked like they were like American girls there, but they might have been like UK girls, okay. like, and whatnot. And it was, uh, we ended up leaving, and we we ended up in a really shady location. The and Asian for, Asian massage place. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what it was, but I remember I just I, we got to get out of here. Okay. And uh, we got out of there, and we walked, and we finally got a cab. And got back. I believe that was China. It was, and I just remember like thinking to myself, if we went missing, nobody would know where to find us. No. Like it was one of those like Jeez. it's pretty scary going to other countries. And oh yeah, my sure. phone wasn't working. Like you don't have unless you're at the hotel with Wi-Fi. Yeah, and, like, it's uh, every culture is different. And again, so you just but you. I think for the most part, everyone's on their best behavior when they go over for the tours and everything outside of like maybe drinking at the hotel or the bus mm -hmm. where the, they're safe zones, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. but yeah. All right. Ace, anything else okay. this week? Yeah. Let's talk about Vader. Uh, way back in December, 2016, Vader had announced he was diagnosed with congenitive heart failure. His doctors told him he had less than two years to live. Uh, last February, he had posted that he'd gotten a fourth doctor's opinion. It was more op optimistic. Uh, his latest update, he said he was going for surgery, full-blown open-heart surgery on Monday, uh, and he's to wish him luck. Uh, Vader was actually still performing in the ring last year, even after the diagnosis. Really? During a show in Japan last year, he actually collapsed in the ring, though he later said it was because of a head injury sustained during the match. It had nothing to do with his heart. Uh, he's also gone on record saying he doesn't plan to stop wrestling, and he hopes he to die in the ring. Wow. Now, look, I love Vader. He was a great performer back in the day. He had a great presence. Uh, you know, when you saw Vader, you knew you were going to see a hell of a fight. Uh, I... Don't know how to respond to that comment about dying in the ring. You you got to admire his dedication, but you got to think that's going to be terrifying for the other guys in the ring. Yeah, that's um, he's a wrestler through and through. It's um, yeah. that's one of the parts about wrestling that scares me. That 
and, and my, I, I truly hope he recovers from this and everything goes as well as possible. That's uh, age catches up with everybody, and he's a he's a larger than life character. He was a larger than life character, and he is. Uh, I remember loving him as a kid. I when especially when he once he yeah. went over to WWE, I was. Um, I really liked him. I always, and he's believable and uh, a physical guy. And uh, I've met him several times when he came back. He did, I think he did a thing with Heath, Heath Slater years ago. And then he was actually at a show I did in Georgia, an independent show last year. He was wrestling on it, which I was surprised. And uh, I, I would, I would prefer, obviously it would be, I, it would be nice. It, there comes a point when you got to, you got to wrap it up and I don't know if he needs to do it still, or he likes to do it still, but wrestling is extremely hard on your body. And I, I just want the guy to be healthy. I think that's uh health comes first and foremost. And, um, I, you know, hopefully, and like you said, for, you know, he wants to die in the ring again, then, then another, another human being has to kind of deal with that. And, yeah, it, 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 it's and that's not ideal. I mean, it, it, if that's what he wants, that's what he wants. You can't can't tell a guy he's wrong if that's what he truly believes and wants. But um, I wish him the best, man. I actually just got this funny you mentioned Vader because I'm going to be at WrestleCon now for him because my Australian tour that I was going to be WrestleMania weekend is now pushed back to May. So I had an opening for that weekend and I was able to we got two signings. Now I'm going to be at WrestleCon in New Orleans which I'll be putting that up, but it was because the the vendor bringing me in, uh, they were bringing Vader, but it, he couldn't do it because of the heart stuff. So it was, uh, that all ended up working out well as far as for me getting to go over there. But it, I, I hope he's all right. Cause that's heart issues or, or no, no laughing matter with that. And it's our health comes first. So uh, I, I wish him the best and I hope he makes a full recovery if he can. All right, one last story this week. I want to talk about Taz and Corey Graves. Uh, Taz was on Jericho's podcast last week, and uh, he made some comments that really seemed to paint Corey Graves and Brian Saxton in a bad light. He said, I believe, uh, and this is going to sound negative, that you know Corey Graves was a former tag team champion. Uh, Barry Sa- ba- Byron Saxton barely worked. So that jumps out to me. I believe that. You can't tell me as a fan. If I've never been a wrestler, you can't tell me what it's like to be a world champion if you've never done it. I'm sorry. So Graves shot back on Twitter. Insecurity is a bad color on you, Taz. She stuck to the orange and black. And Taz went back and forth with them. I have no clue what you're talking about. Tough to be insecure. I'm the happiest I've ever been as a professional. I always stick to the orange and black. Um, I understand in general where Taz is coming from, but you know, I'm just not sure I agree. You know, Jim Ross never wrestled a match, and he's probably the greatest commentator there ever was. And you know, Corey Graves seems pretty dedicated to getting it right. And you know, it's not like he was a novice. He wrestled for 14 years before he was you know forced yeah. to retire and do commentary. So. Um. That's a tough one. I don't know. And again, there's always kind of a a competitive edge to people, no matter what. And I, I like all those guys. I'm I'm I came up with yeah, Byron Saxton in developmental. Byron's been wrestling for a long time. He just never he never really broke out as a as a he as a performer outside of NXT, and he never really had the opportunity. It's not like he had a a singles run in WWE and flopped. He just never. He was never a guy that really got called up and had a run or had a chance. And But again, I was talking to the two-man podcast guys about this. All we all do in wrestling is play roles. But we there are different levels to going out there and working main event matches and, and things of that nature and having the pressure and being the guy and or being the, you know, the, the guy working with the guy and, or working, you know, for a mid card title or doing the opening match. There's all, there's all these different roles that we all play and not everybody gets to play every role, uh, unfortunately. And that's the way that it is. But I think there's sometimes I think in, when you're in Taz is a very passionate man. And I've, I've heard a lot of his stuff. I like, and I've met him. He's very, I, I like him a lot. There's, and I think it's just always a competitive thing with with people and and everyone's entitled to their opinion and stuff but it's sometimes I understand where Corey could be coming from too because he's extremely passionate also and he loves wrestling and ob- and it was taken away and he had the concussion stuff and he was given an opportunity to do something else within the company and I think he he grabbed the ball and he ran with it and a lot of times the commentating today is different than even commentating probably from when Taz was there too a lot of that stuff in, in Vince is in their ears and, and they're 
they're lower, they're in the beginning of their career st still where they're not maybe, you know, five or 10 years in where they maybe have a little more leeway to kind of, to do more, say more out there and stuff. They're, they're still kind of playing that game and, and it's going one week at a time. And I understand both sides of the fence and I, and, and that might just be Taz's opinion. But again, like you said, Jim Ross is the greatest or one of the greatest commentators of all time. And, um, you know, he's not the best wrestler in the world. I'm sure everyone saw his WrestleMania match. <laughs> it was notorious for being one of the worst. But he, he that doesn't that's that doesn't mean he commentating is an entirely different um thing than performing. But I think and those guys have a full understanding of the the performing aspect. And you're it's gonna be hard. You're not gonna have it's hard to have you're not gonna have two former world champions doing commentating. Even in any you look at any sport, you look at UFC, Joe Rogan. I don't. I think everyone could say Joe Rogan is, is an amazing commentator and with a an amazing following. And you know he trains. He he understands MMA. He does the training, but he's 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 not a fighter for them. He's not a former world champion, and nobody has a problem with it. But it's, I get it. It, it is. I, I think it's just one of those things. I think everybody is very competitive, and and it, and it sometimes and. It's just the way that it is, and but I think if those two guys were to meet, they would probably get along just fine. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's one of those. It, Taz is giving his perspective on it from what he sees. Corey's there, busting his ass, doing everything with Saxton on the road, dedicating and sacrificing their time. So it's hard not to take things personal sometimes when you hear that. And and Taz again said he he's not trying to be negative or whatever. It, it, but it, it's just it's just the nature of the beast. That's what people do. So. Cool. That's that's it for me this week. Okay. Anything, uh, uh, just mind if I make some quick plugs? Oh. Yeah, go ahead and plug. <laughs> uh, you know, you can find Mike A. Scalero on criticalblast.com. This week we posted up the new trailer for Deadpool 2, and uh, a lot of us have been talking about the new Krypton show on sci-fi. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter at SkitchNM. Awesome. Mike, thank you very much for joining us here. Uh, have a good week. We will. Uh, I'm going to be in Scotland next week, so I'm actually... We're talking Asian Joe. I'm probably going to have to bring the equipment out to Scotland and do an episode out there with somebody and get an interview out there. And uh, I might have to just read the wrestling news next week on my own for uh, to get uh, us by because it's going to. I'm not able to bring all the the equipment. I'm only going to be able to bring the recorder and a couple mics. So it's um, next week might be an off week uh, as far as the regular format of the show, but we will still be. The show must go on, but if not, we'll touch base with you, Ace, uh, the following week. And uh, thank you again, and uh, we're going to go ahead and take our first break, and we'll be right back after these messages. All right, later, Mike. I am the ultimate Ryback, and I'm here to tell you about Feed Me More Nutrition. It is the ultimate premium in sports nutrition. Wake up, unlimited energy. I take it non stop and I have all the unlimited energy from the gods above my blood, my, my skin. The energy is pouring through my system. The big guy of natural testosterone booster will be giving you erection to the heavens. And if you need protein, protein built muscles upon muscles, my I so hungry premium grass fed prebiotic and hand whey protein isolate is what you need. Fat burn body fat with shell shock extreme. Fat burner, the most powerful fat burner on the market today. Feed me more nutrition. Save 10% with Podcast 10. Available on FeedMeMore.com and Amazon. All right, we're back. We're going to kind of, we're going to mix things up here. We're on a little bit of a tight schedule today. With Asian Joe, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do reviews. Mm -hmm. Reviews of the week. Yeah. Uh, first, we got a review in uh, for the show. 
before we kind of uh, move on. Yeah, we the... got we actually got two reviews, but one on one on iTunes and one on Instagram. Actually, uh, I'm gonna do the one from iTunes. Um, best trio ever from Adam D. James. Uh, the addition of a porn star uh, to our fandom of wrestling makes for some great and interesting podcast content. Tips from Ryback and Phoenix are always welcome and informative. Joe needs to speak up when reading something into the mic, which my face is really on the mic right now. It is. I think you actually, but the sound thing has been great. Yeah, I think but he must have. He must have reviewed some of the old, the old older, content. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all in all, of, uh, all in all, a fun podcast that makes Mondays bearable to work. Keep up the fun and feed me more. You gotta love it. We're we're helping the working man get through the day. Yeah. But here's another another great one is actually posted on this Instagram. Uh, this is from uh, J Guernsey, nineteen ninety. Hey, right back. I don't have iTunes, so I wanted to leave a review here. Uh, your podcast helped me get through some rough stuff. I'm a single dad raising two girls, so life is hectic and stressful. Your podcast has helped me get through the day and get over life's BS. Your tips and workout tips have helped me drop from 250 down to 215 since I started listening. Wow. That's that's crazy. That's incredible. That's amazing, yeah. Uh, thank you for being an inspiration and motivator. Rayback, stay, bi- stay the big guy. Phoenix, stay sexy. And Asian Joe, stay Asian. <laughs> I don't think I have a choice. <laughs> what is his name again? Uh, J uh, G U E R N S E Y nineteen ninety. I think Gerd. I'm gonna go ahead. That's our winner this week. If you can contact me at the big guy at feedmemore dot com with a, um, I guess it's gonna be hard for him to send a. Well, he's gonna listen to podcasts though. So yeah, he, but not I'll on... know his name. Yeah. Uh, based on that, uh, contact me on the big guy at feedmemore dot com, and uh, we'll go ahead and. Get you hooked up with a Feed Me More Nutrition uh, prize package here. And uh, congratulations and thank you for for the support. And uh, congratulations on the weight loss. And this is, again, it's cool to be able to help people. That's yeah. with, with all the haters and negative people out there, you got to be able to. This, is, this podcast is for the people that have followed me, that believe in me, and I believe in them and helping them and, like, trying to do good. It's not... The, the negative people are going to try to cherry pick things and take things out of context. This isn't for them. This is for making a difference and letting people know the real Ryback and, and trying to do things and try to do good things while living my life, but also helping other people. So thank you very much. And uh, your positive reviews are always encouraged, guys, on iTunes or Stitcher. Uh, yes, Stitcher. Or, you know, even post on Twitter and Instagram. Well, hopefully we'll catch it, but... yeah. That was on the questions this week on yeah. there, which I like. I prefer doing the questions on Instagram. It's a little better, I yeah. feel like, than so. Mm-hmm. But uh, and then speaking of which, I'm thinking of. I was telling you I was on my the Twitter on the tablet, mm-hmm. uh, which actually finally works now. Yeah. So funny story <laughs> on that. My tablet quit working yesterday, and I couldn't figure out it, it needed to be charged, and it wasn't charging. I don't know what happened. Something it, it malfunctioned. And uh, I told Asian Joe, I dropped it a couple times on my podcast table, like the flat, <laughs> not trying to break it or anything, but like right. big guy's way of resetting it. And yeah. I'm like hitting the buttons, like, but it won't work. Uh. And then you come over and then after like two minutes with it, you're like, I got it. Yeah. And I was like, what'd you do? And you're like, oh, these two buttons. I was like, oh, I didn't do that combo. Yeah. I was like, so that's your way you actually fix it. And then me dropping things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe. Which, by the way, has worked before. I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, it's it's like blowing in the Nintendo, <laughs> or like games. hitting, yeah, blowing in Nintendo, or, or hitting the, hitting an old TV set or something. Yeah, it will like all of a sudden work for years again. You're like, oh, just yeah. hit it. It just works. <laughs> and then eventually you get angry enough that you eventually get the hammer or the sledgehammer and to smash it. it. <laughs> Fuck you, TV. <laughs> Oh man, That's what's so going funny. on this week? Um, did you go to? Did you do anything for St. Patty's Day? No, I. By the way, I didn't even know it was St. Patrick's oh, really? Day until about three quarters into the day. <laughs> one of the one of my friends messaged me and sent me Happy St. Patrick's Day. I go, uh-huh. what? <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, what'd you do? Uh, my buddy, uh, a couple of my friends of mine, we actually went to uh, uh, Fremont Street downtown. Uh, it was they pretty much wanted to do people watch, but they also were drinking because I'm not a big drinker. Yeah. So I had like one or two beers or something, and then. We just walked around and just people watched and just had fun. And but the highlight, the highlight of the night is we're standing in the corner, like getting lobster tacos. 
of all places. A lobster. I wanted a lobster grilled cheese, but they were out. Ooh, that sounds delicious. Yeah. So I ended up getting a lobster quesadilla. But as as we were waiting to get our food, a big I wouldn't I mean she wasn't big, but a big black woman started running. Just running. Just okay. dodging and do, dodging weaving. I'm I'm not being, you Sounds know, like racist. I'm just describing the girl, the, the woman. Okay. Dodging weaving is like, man, for a big girl, she can move. What was she running from? <laughs> so we waited we waited for about like thirty seconds. Then all of a sudden we see six cops run after her. Oh my god. <laughs> So, so she made it like half the block, and they finally caught her, and so they 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 arrested her and cuffed her. But that was a pretty bold move. I wonder how she got so far away from them to begin with. I have no idea. I guess they were just questioning her, and she decided to just, just run. bolted. Yeah, they were shocked by how fast they didn't think she could. I was it. like, I was like, why is she moving so fast? And then I like, and I turned around, and was like, oh. Cops. <laughs> There's some freak humans out there, though. You would look at them and not think. Well, like Mark Henry, for instance. Yeah. It's just like, a... they, they're these freaks. Deceiving. That, like, you know, like, looks... you know what he's capable of because he's, but there's people out there that just haven't done anything. Right. And they, but they live their own lives and like, they're just these freaks. Yeah. Like that woman, she could run a 4 4 40, like, <laughs> yeah. 400 pounds, and you're just like, what? Yeah. If this lady applied herself to anything, <laughs> but she just didn't want to. No, and like, and she's even getting she's arrested. Because she yeah. knows she runs a 4 4 40. Yeah. Fuck you guys. I'm just but apparently, do... she couldn't, she wasn't fast enough to outrun the cops. They found a cop that can run 4 3 and he <laughs> yeah, caught her. I know. And then she beat the shit out of him. <laughs> Because just she's this freak athlete. Oh my god! The uh, they're trying to tase her. It's not phasing her. They're just like, <laughs> what do we do? But yeah, that was a that was a pretty interesting night. So, but it was a good time. The um, yeah, I didn't even know. I was telling you though, the Twitter went on the tablet before that. Uh, I I retweeted some tweets because I we have the Twitter on my on the tablet because I don't keep it on my phone. And I was like, ah, oh, maybe I should start being more interactive on Twitter because I'm trying I'm trying to start being more interactive again on social media. Yeah. I, uh, because it's so important. And here's the thing, because I was talking to my good buddy, JD with Iron Attitude, and I'm doing the Instagram live things we talked about. I'm going to start doing those every day or most days yeah. to start because there's these people out there with the, in, 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 on social media and these, in these journalist quote unquote journalists where they're, they're, they're trying to, they're making money and profiting and taking things out of context and doing it at my expense. Mm -hmm. And it sucks. And the best way, and it sucks that people let them get them so angry over things, fake news, essentially. This, that isn't real news or it's altered to try to paint me in a bad light. So was like, and my buddy was like, why don't you just do Instagram lives every day? And that way you can kind of interact with your fans and people can see that that is not what is going on and you could address them directly every day. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, yeah, it's a great idea. I'm busy, but I can find a way in my car going to the gym for 15 minutes and stop for five minutes and answer questions and, you know, why did you say that about Rusev? Guys, me and Rusev are friends. That's why this was said. He said it to me as a joke. I said it to him as a joke. Nobody thinks anybody is on steroids. Guys, we're friends. It's been acknowledged that we're friends. You should know this by now since you know everything about wrestling. But like it's... Right, so you're getting upset at two friends busting each other's balls. Right, yeah. So like, okay, we could address it on there and then... And just things of that nature. And, and it's... Um, I'm trying to... With the whole Gary V crushing it thing... Uh, Using social media, and it, it, it just to it's the only way you could fight it is by putting out the good fight, and you got to stand up for yourself. But put your content out there and uh, use it responsibly, and because um, every social media platform is is uh, important. Well, it's crazy though, because Facebook got ding yes from the uh, the Federal Trade Commission. They did for uh, giving data to uh, Cambridge Analytical. Yes, so. Apparently it wasn't it wasn't a hack. It was data that was given to them mm -hmm. that was a breach of um comp, the customer confidentiality. confidentiality. Yeah. So they Mark Zuckerberg actually uh, put out saying that he was sorry for what happened and they're changing they're changing whatever they need to well, do. Well, they're not going to come out and say that he he's not going to admit any wrongdoing in any of this probably. No, but he's apologizing for yes, what he, happened. Well, he should. Yeah. I, I mean, that's uh that's that's the sort of thing that could really put a huge debt in your company. Yeah, uh, where they the stock fell quite a bit, and then I think it stopped. I don't. I didn't check on it today. Well, I mean, the stock market got hit pretty hard because of the uh, the tariffs going on. Uh, I think I didn't. Today was one of my buddy was telling me about it. I didn't. I didn't check on the market. Yeah, because today, um, I knew it was down because the president signed 
a, 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 like a tariff, a huge tariff on China to tra Rich. trade, and so the stock market took it, took really? a real hit. I think a seven fifty. Uh, points I or need to, maybe I need to look at my stock account today. Yeah. It's probably down a little more than so, I thought. So yeah, initially he was he's only doing aluminum and steel, but then he's actually doing uh, like t trade tariffs uh, uh, on China. The market can be very unpredictable. At yeah, times. it it's... takes one person to say something, and it can just dip. Didn't it, was it the Rihanna? Not Rihanna. Maybe, not maybe. Uh, oh yeah, I think it was Rihanna and also the Kylie Kim, Jenner. Kardashian. The Car yeah, the, J the Jassians to drop. Snap. I'm, not, I'm not using Snapchat anymore. I and well, so, I I sold all my shares last year. Yeah, uh, and I took a loss on it because I was just I I saw the writing on the wall. Well, oh, yeah. it was I was like I'm just going to take my losses and um, I don't see this uh, Instagram stories is is too powerful now and everything it's everything under one platform. It's just more and then Snap once we talked about once they made that change. But what's crazy though, Facebook owns Instagram. Yeah, and so that's. That's another because people say it's like oh I'm not using Facebook anymore but I'm using Instagram it's like you know there's the same company right but so but they used to be separate companies they until Facebook separate. bought them but it, yeah now they're it, they're owned by the same company but they it Instagram is to me the best of all the platforms mm -hmm. because it's you don't you can disable comments on there and you don't have to be you don't have to be caught up on it's not the words necessarily it's the images right um and videos and videos yeah video, videos yeah. and images where people on Facebook you're getting. It's like Twitter, like the things where you type words are usually the worst, in my opinion, because you're dealing with opinions of everybody and everybody, you're, you're exposed to negativity and people being angry and people getting mad at this and Facebook with your updates and it just like, it's, it's more time consuming too, because you're reading everything mm -hmm. and it might not be something you want to read, but you don't know it's something you want to read until you read it. And then it's like. God damn it! Why did I read that? Yeah. Fuck Katie today. She stupid I just, bitch. On, on my Facebook, I just post like interesting what's going on in the world, like how I, I think I posted about uh, how a pit bull had a pit bull dog had like a weird like can, you know disease or not disease, but like her hip she couldn't walk. Yeah. But they showed a, a dog, another dog, kind of helping her walk because oh, the dog's wow. playing with, and it's a, it's it's a it's a touching you know video. How the dog. That's the good stuff where you use it. So for I, I I post stuff. I post like motivational or like how to videos, yep. how to improve, you know stuff like that. But I never really I rarely post the like, hey, I'm eating a steak today, or um, you know, it's like stupid stuff. It I is don't extremely do stupid. I so I hate I, I loathe this stuff, and I have to do it because it's like so for having a business, and I found and from all the different things, you have to be interactive and with people. And especially with a supplement line or like I, I'll show myself eating healthy sometimes like today when I made my tuna fish and bone marrow collagen powder. It was disgusting. Tastes like shit. What was it? Tastes like shit. Yeah, it tastes like <laughs> shit. I, guys, I don't drink shit. Uh, but it was uh, because that helps people with, when you have a brand. You yeah. need to be interactive. But at the same time, it's kind of like it sucks too. Like it's like I, I don't want to have to do it. Any, any Like I don't like doing it. I really don't. And it's... Uh, it's a necessary evil because if you don't, nobody, I'm not on a platform to be seen anymore as far as that is my platform to be seen with this podcast and to be heard. Yeah, you have to, if you have a business, you have to learn to innovate and stuff like that, which, yeah. same thing. Like, it's like with, the Instagram with, Live with, stuff. I don't like doing but I yeah. want to be able to, it's nice to interact with them, but sometimes you don't have time, but right. it's important to do right. that. Well, when I mentioned about innovation, because Tours R Us is going out of business. Wait, what? Tours R Us is going out of business. You know that was my first employer. Really? Yeah. I... Fucking went there for a Christmas job for Christmas money. Uh huh. And I, I don't know if it was a couple months before Christmas. And they took one look at me. I was in high school and a baseball, football player. I wanted to work on the store, out on the store, on the floor. Okay. And just be around the video games, probably. Of course. That and, was, I bought my first Game Boy. Yeah. Us. That was, it was mostly for the video games and like wrestling stuff. Yeah. And they, uh, I thought oh, it'd be cool to work here if we get a little money for Christmas. It was down the road from my house at okay. the Meadows Mall at the time. And uh, where that, that was one of the locations in Las Vegas, the original, I believe, uh, here in Vegas. But they uh, they took one. Oh, you're a big kid. We need you. We could use you up in the attic for all the big ticket items. Oh, and I go, what? And so they locked me away upstairs for eight hours. Oh. It was just, it's hot. The, up, yeah, upstairs of the Toys R Us, you had to like take these shitty stairs, and it's where all the big toy sets were. And everything that so, you have to build, you have to build them. No, or you have to but when people them? would like see a toy, a big play set, like with the swings, 
or the the big were those big oh yeah cars they had the little slip that yeah okay I got gotcha. you had to get the slip and then they would purchase it and then I would get the notification from the item on my little machine they made me carry around <laughs> hey Ryback go get this fucking big ticket item and get it to their car and they're not going to tip you by the way oh, and the, but my the favorite part is there was one other guy working up there with me and sometimes we'd be alone so you'd be we had no phones or anything <laughs> just you'd be sitting there by yourself for eight hours. <laughs> Just waiting, and you might only get a couple things sometimes. They're like, and like you would, you'd actually get excited when you got to like, oh, well, I get to go carry this down now and kill some time and see real people, because it's like being in prison up there, and they, uh, and it was like dingy and dark up there, and like I forgot, I forgot it was a TV show or something where they're working at a at a warehouse or something, and he just started working there, and his coworker, hey, let me show you a secret a secret place. Yeah, yeah. So he goes in there, and it's basically a box, like. Just a bunch of boxes stacked up, and you can sneak in there, and they just sit, they just sit down and stare at each other. It's yep. like, see, we don't have to work. <laughs> just stare at each other. I would go to the, I can't remember if it was, uh, there, I can't remember what the drugstore name used to be. It was, it was before Walgreens and before CVS. Like Rite Aid? Rite Aid? No, or... Rite Aid. It was another one. It started with an S. Safeway? Safeco? Savon? Savon, maybe? Maybe it was Savon. Savon Drugs? Savon yeah, Drugs. Savon yeah. Drugs. Yeah, yeah. Are they still around or not? Yeah, there, there's a few of them. I know there's a Savon's Drug when I was in California. Okay. So there's probably a few, but Savon not... Drugs was right next door to, to Toys R Us. I would go buy, this is before I knew about nutrition, and I would buy big bags of candy and <laughs> uh, um, candy bars and a big thing of soda, usually like a, a Dr. Oh, Pepper God, yeah. or a Coke. And so I'd bring all this candy up there and just sit up there and eat candy <laughs> <laughs> like a loser. But the other guy that worked with me actually loved wrestling too. Okay. So we were able to talk about wrestling okay. while we were up there. But he actually, he was a little older than me. He was joining, he joined Buffalo Jim's wrestling school here in town. That was the only wrestling school at the time in Vegas. Okay. And it was like endorsed by Yokozuna. I always remember Yokozuna oh, yeah, was on the yeah. commercials for the Buffalo Gyms Wrestling School. And uh, and I remember he told me, he's like, it's not too good. And uh, But I didn't, I was so young at the time. I didn't know. I go, it sounds amazing. Did you, did you go? Is that... Oh, no, no. Oh. I was in, I was, I mean, in high school. Oh, you still in high school? Yeah, okay, I was so playing sports and I wasn't even, I just liked watching it. I wasn't going to stop going to school or do any of that to like, just had no, I just, I didn't even know you like. Didn't even know you could go be. I didn't know how to go be a pro wrestler. Like, okay, it was like to so me wait, that was like a like that was something you don't go do. Like, I was I played sports. That was like okay. So like thing. so like when you were a kid, you never aspired to be like a WWE wrestler. Or no, WWE. I was loved it, but I always thought I was going to be a baseball or football player. Oh, okay, I but I loved wrestling more than anything. I just didn't think it was a realistic thing to me. It was like I didn't think you can go be a pro wrestler. I just thought like to me it was like oh, I'm going to play baseball or football. That's what I do. Okay, uh, like I just thought like. I didn't know, like, how would you go, how does one go about becoming a professional wrestler? It wasn't quite as, what's the word I'm looking for, is um, it wasn't as available as it is today right. with wrestling schools all around and right, right, whatnot, right. And, and with the internet not being as prevalent, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, because you different... didn't know. Unless someone tells you or yeah. if you see it on a TV ad or something, you would never know. But as I got older, like, then, I, like, I wanted to do, like, I... I when I was younger, I, we wrestled all the time. I did it. I, I was doing it without knowing I was doing it. Mm -hmm. I just didn't think it was a realistic job. I didn't know, like, oh, I'm going to go be fucking the big guy Ryback and make a bunch of money doing this. Like, right. It, it, it was an evolution to get to that point mindset. But yeah, man, it was, uh, that was my first job. So they're going out of business. They're going out of business because, like, they talked about why they were going out of business because they never, they didn't innovate. They outsourced their toys to Amazon. And that's how Amazon kind of took over. And so, in the meantime, Toys R Us was just paying off their debts instead of innovating, like, their stores and stuff like that. So, every oh. time you go in there, it's just the same old Toys R Us that was when you worked there. Yeah. So, that's why. And now, they're they're going out of business. And so, I Amazon think, is putting them out of business, kind of. Is that Well, kind of... no. I mean, they... They gave their business to Amazon. That's what happened. Okay. And so that's what, and obviously Walmart. Paying those other, Amazon fees. Yes. That's what, it, that's that's, where they that's went That's where they're paying out, paying out their bills. <laughs> but what they're, they're getting some flack because some of the, the higher up executives are getting bonuses. Okay. Of course. Compensations. But meanwhile, 31,000 employees are going, are losing their jobs. They're getting their last little piece before the company goes under. Of course. That's what all companies do. Yeah. That's, that's what true. happens in every industry, every, and it sucks. That is, 
But that is it. Thirty-one thousand jobs. I think so. I think I. I mean, I could be. I could be wrong. Could I be feel like this is something with with what's going on with mankind and the way we are evolving. I I really question, like, what where are we going to be in a hundred years? Like, think about because they're like, we were talking about the artificial intelligence before, and with have you seen like there was an Uber? There's self driving cars now. There was actually yeah, a person actually got someone killed. got killed. Yeah, and I don't know the details of the situation, but I was like. We are eventually, we are, machines are growing, artificial intelligence is growing by the day. Like, we, like the, the, the Aurora Cannabis, one of the, the, the big manu- uh, marijuana manufacturers uh, in Canada I, I invest in, they're building their Aurora Sky facilities. These facilities are going to be run by robots. That oh, take yeah. care of them because they're more reliable than humans. Exactly. And the marijuana is very fragile and like they, they need it to be. But I was like, those are all jobs that would have been human jobs for, but those are now going to be robot jobs. Mm-hmm. So, like, what other things? We see the cars, self driving cars. Are we going to even need regular Uber? Like, Uber now, if Uber can create these self driving cars and actually perfect it, why would they need Uber drivers? Exactly. The the cars are then then now it's a hundred percent profit outside of their cost to get the cars going. Right. Eventually though, they're just gonna be turning straight profit. Mm-hmm. And then what other area taxi cab drivers gone? Like so the, now we're just gonna have a bunch of humans. I feel like there's eventually gonna be a war on machines like Terminator. Yeah. Where like this is where we are like you could just see it. Exactly. Like we're everyone's gonna be miserable, no one's gonna have anything, robots are gonna be controlling everything. And then the robots are going to be so goddamn smart. They're like, why do we need these humans? Mm-hmm. Oh, we don't. We're going to turn into batteries. Yeah. Like the Matrix. And then I'm going to like fucking have to come back in time like Arnold and fucking <laughs> reproduce to <laughs> save the fucking world. <laughs> My favorite movie of all time is happening to us right now. Yeah, it's, it's happening. Skynet. Sky, it, no, it's, this over. is... We always joke and you read about these, always these books from the past a hundred years ago and they're talking about the future and they're not that far off. No. It's like, well, we still don't have flying cars though. That's, that's what I want. I always see in the, in the Black Panther uh, yeah. movie, they have like, and they had the flying ship and I'm yeah. like, I was watching this and I, I'm thinking in my head, this is going to be a thing. Like this is, that is going to happen. Mm-hmm. It, it, when, I don't know. Will it be in our lifetime? The way they're well, going, I feel like. It's it. unfortunate that the the person who passed you know died i mean they they stopped testing the uber uh they were testing i think phoenix and i think a couple texas cities uh to go test the uber self-driving ubers but do you know how the guy died was, was it was a, hit- i think it was a woman it was a woman okay. that i believe that died that actually she was i think she was i think at a crosswalk or or taking her bike walking her bike across the street and then I think the car was going about forty miles per hour and hit her. What was it? A malfunction then? It's probably a malfunction. There's they're, they're still investigating. So, Ooh. but there was actually a a person in the car getting a ride. Yeah, getting a ride. And so there was actually a video of her reacting to the accident. And so she was like in shock, like the oh. so it's. Yeah. What a nightmare. That's why was it being tested in real str- like they they needed real real world data. And but so, can't they set up a real world? Where- I think I think what they're doing they were testing it in the lab or in into a closed area. Yeah. And so they said, "Oh, okay, we're ready to to try it out in the real world." But I feel like people need to be that's something like that like that person should have been aware that a car was being tested. Yeah, or they should at least have a drive, like a a, a person in the driver seat override the system. that can override the system yeah. to step on the brake because exactly. hey, you know, but that, that I is don't know. that. See, that's the kind of shit that shouldn't happen right there with this. That that's going to be bad on them, man. Like that's, I don't think that's. I think it's going too far doing that. I don't think we need that. I think it's because you know why it's being done. It's not being done to evolve. It's being done to make the company more money. They're already making money. They get greedy and they're trying to, what they're going to do is create more problems than good over time with this because we're replacing jobs for humans with machines so they can make more money. They're already making money. They're getting greedy. This is the, the big part of business I talk about where you, you have a responsibility to do good. And when you start making money like that, you need to do good, not bad. And I feel like that's one of the things, and that's, and not even in it that, that, that this something like that should never happen. And my heart goes out to that family and friends of that woman that was killed. Never in a million years should that happen. 
and like that, that's you know shame on Uber. Well, actually, yeah. I'm sorry. Actually, this 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 article just came out like at one thirty or like a few hours ago that there was actually an operator in the driver's seat, and really? they said that the Uber operator of the self-driving car in the fatal crash had a criminal record, and so there was somebody in the car. So I'm assuming she wasn't paying attention. Wow. Otherwise, she could have overrided. it. Really? Yeah. That's not going to be good. See, that's... Uh, or the lady, car stop. And fuck you, human. Like, that's... Yeah, because, like, she was actually... Like, she was... They said they, they had a video in the car. And she was actually just looking down. On her phone. Either on her phone or Guaranteed, something. Which... Yeah. She's not driving, but if that's her job, to, like that's, yeah. Oh man, the world. What are we doing to ourselves, guys? I don't know. I don't know. It's scary, though. I do. I do want to say, Asian Joe. I know you got to get out of here soon. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Phoenix messaged me and said she's free. Okay. So I'll. I'll have a little more conversation with Phoenix. But I did want to say the before we we send you off bowling. Yes. The. Uh, the 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 big guy. I'm getting an image made for the big guy versus food. Yes, uh, that's right. Uh, you I sent, sent the me link. the link. I was so excited. I didn't look at it right away. I looked at it later, and I was like, "Oh my god, I want to do these one by one." But I want to save. So we talked about the food eating challenge because I want to put this up on my YouTube channel because I think man versus food is done. Now it's time for the big guy versus food. <laughs> and I'm not gonna look. I'm not trying to go on a TV thing. I'm just gonna do this for me. To have fun and go out. I was telling you, like, the first one was uh, at the Mandalay sliders, Bay. The yeah, slide, sliders. It's the 24, slide, are, yeah. 24 sliders in 24 minutes. I, I don't know. I, I believe that's so. what it was it, from what you told. But the sliders have, like, all this other stuff on they it. They had too. all other condiments but, and oh, stuff it like looks, that. I, my mouth was watering just looking. I go, that is the first one. Because it's, it's $40 if you don't make it. Yeah, big deal. Yeah. I don't even <laughs> get, what, get a free meal. I mean, I pay 40 right. bucks for a meal. I spend that on every meal I go out and eat. That's, uh, but I figured that would be a good first challenge. And when you told me you were like, I'll record everything. I was yeah. like, I'm in, I'll schedule a date night around it where, Hey, you want to go eat with me? I'm going to yeah. do this food challenge. And, uh, <laughs> will, will the big guy be screaming, feed me more when it's all said or done? No, or like, I am. <laughs> done. <laughs> Just, uh, I think that would be hilarious. And then the people, the. The, the Ryback haters, we, Ryback has resorted to doing food challenges when I'm just going to do it for fun. Like, they, like why not? Yeah, it's like, going to be, but fits. dude, yeah, it's, I think that's, well, that's going to, I think, boost your popularity, that's for sure. I think it would, uh, but it, it would be really funny, I just get out of shape, because man, they talk about man versus food, he got overweight as the yes. years went on. Yes, I'm just fat in my singlet, but I'm just happy as shit, I'm winning these food challenges, Get a big major TV deal out of it, TV show. Do we have challengers come in? Challengers, but I'm just fucking fat as shit. <laughs> but I still got a big burly chest and big arms. You're gonna be my cran- you're gonna be like Mark, Mark Henry. You like, just, big yeah, dude, just, like I just start strong. doing strongman competitions. Yeah. Too. <laughs> <laughs> oh my oh. god, that's so good. But uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we're gonna let Asian Joe go. We're gonna take All right, well, break. Well, before here. I go, um, check out yes. Asian Joe or AsianJoe.com um, on Twitter, Webmaster Joe and also on Instagram what Master Joe uh, I appreciate you guys and um, keep the reviews coming and hope uh, we get more listeners absolutely and we'll uh, we'll be joining back with you in a couple weeks here uh, when I'm back from Scotland and uh, I'll see you then we're going to take another break here and we'll be right back with Phoenix guys after these messages hey guys this is the big guy Ryback and I want to personally say thank you to you guys our great listeners and supporters for an amazing 2017. 2018 is surely going to be even better. Feed Me More Nutrition, my natural premium sports nutrition company, had a phenomenal first year, and that's thanks to you. We are adding Finish It Branch Chain Amino Acid Electrolyte Pump Matrix to the lineup for 2018 and have even more exciting custom formulas coming in the upcoming months. If you've been putting off getting in better shape and getting healthy for not only you, but your loved ones, now is the time to do it. Whether it's consuming more lean protein, burning some unwanted pounds, increasing your natural testosterone and sex drive, or ramping up your energy levels, Feed Me More Nutrition has you covered. As always, 
positive Amazon reviews are greatly appreciated. 2018 is your year. Get hungry. Stay hungry. Feed me more. Okay, we are back. And I know we said Phoenix was going to be joining the show. Uh, Unfortunately, she had sent a text saying she was out and available. Uh, Couldn't get a hold of her on the Skype or can't seem to get a hold of her uh, through text. So Asian Joe is off to his bowling league. I'm going to be a one-man gang tonight as I... uh, we wrap up this show um, going on here. I got a, a couple other things just kind of update everybody with everything going on. Sophie, I took her to the doctor uh, this week on Tuesday for her six-week checkup uh, because you guys have all been so great on keeping up everything going on with her. And you've seen her progress on the Instagram Live and Snapchat stories. And uh, she's they are beyond pleased with her. They want to give her another six weeks of being in the crate um, and not around little guy as much outside of like controlled lying on the blanket or lying on the couch next to him while I'm with her. Um, but she's able to now go for long walks and I'm able to walk her outside on the street, which she was having a lot of trouble walking on slippery services and, and the street and sidewalk, which she's still not as good as she is like on the carpet or on the turf or grass, but it's uh, way better. And, uh, her legs are getting stronger and stronger. So uh, they said after six weeks, they don't need to see her probably again. And if she looks like she's okay, that I could probably start letting her and little guy be around each other. And the, she goes and, and letting them play and stuff. But she goes, I could play it safe and wait 10 to 12 weeks, which I'm probably leaning on just for the sake of, I don't want her to have to go through this again. And I would rather be safe uh, than sorry on that. So, uh Thank you guys for all the well wishes with Sophie and uh, just going one day at a time and then she's doing good. Uh, finish it. The branch chain amino acid. Uh, the manufacturer, uh, they was a complicated deal. They were being they're being sold and they were sold uh, to a larger manufacturer where they're essentially merging. Uh, and so everything was on hold uh, with everything and now it's all gone through. And I am waiting on the update from them on when I'm going to be receiving the the finish it branch chain amino acid. And they are I'm hoping to get it scheduled here for Monday. Actually, when I get done with the show tonight, uh, I got to make a phone call uh, to them and try to get that situated for Monday before I leave to Scotland on Tuesday. Otherwise, it's going to be another week after that. So uh, just be patient, please. You guys are going to love it. I promise you it, uh, it tastes amazing and uh, I can't wait for it to get here. And uh, to get it up, and I got to get it shipped off to Amazon as well. The uh, townhouse, everything has gone through on that. I got my first investment property. Uh, I will be closing on that on April 4th or 5th will be the, the official closing date. And I'll be getting that property up on Airbnb. So if you, hey, you want to come out to Vegas on a little vacation, you want to stay at one of the big guys' places, not the place I'm actually living in, but at one of my places, uh, you know, we'll get that up and make that available. We'll have it all, I'll have it all wrestled out in there. A bunch of cool wrestling stuff in there for, what the hell is this, all these cardboard cutouts of this guy in here? But um, with the heads ripped off every time it, the place needs to be cleaned. But uh, the podcast studio as well, if you've seen on the Instagram live studios, we got this uh, almost complete. I put out a thing, if you guys know any tech people out there, know of a good camera for YouTube uh, shoot it my way. I'm looking at a few different ones. I just want to make sure I get the right one. Um, and hopefully we'll get the whole gang back here and get everyone here. And we could start recording in here, which I am recording in here now, but getting it recorded on camera and, uh, getting the YouTube clips segments of the show and the whole show available on YouTube for you guys. So, uh, thank you for your patience on that end. And with that, there's other than that, uh, with Amazon, there was a little bit of a deal, where uh, the Cherry Limeade Wake Up Unlimited Energy has been unlisted by Amazon. They are, uh, unfortunately, they're a bit of a nightmare to work with. I love buying from them. Shopping on there is a great experience. Uh, Selling on there is, if you follow this podcast, has been a little bit different uh, of a situation. And uh, they uh, unlisted the product because there was a, somebody 
uh, had received a, a product, a wake up unlimited energy where the, the, I don't know if Amazon ships on their own or through USPS or U, UPS. Um, I believe they have their own shipping department, but, uh, the product got smashed somehow in the shipping process where the, the label was removed or, or opened from the damage from the impact and the lid off and powder all over the place. Clearly anybody with half a brain would be able to see that and see that, oh, this was a shipping error because Amazon wouldn't fulfill that. They wouldn't ship a product in that condition. They're not allowed to. And everything has to is labeled and wrapped and sealed in strict accordance uh, by industry standards. I wouldn't even be allowed to sell products there if my products came like that. So rather than looking at this as, oh, this was a shipping issue, they go, oh, this is a safety issue. We have to unlist this item because it is, it is being sent with a, the seal open and powder all over the place. This is what we deal with, ladies and gentlemen. Three hours of my week has been spent on the phone with Amazon, and it has still not been resolved because they have not, the, the department that is supposed to call me back is not called back now in five days. So Amazon, if you want Cherry Limeade Wake Up Unlimited Energy, it's not on Amazon right now. Hopefully, it's up by Monday when this podcast comes out. But buy it on FeedMeMore.com. Eventually, I would, I would, can't, um, I would like everyone to buy it from FeedMeMore.com. Uh, it, it's more profitable that way. Amazon takes upwards. It's over a third, uh, closer to probably even 40% at times of, of the, the money uh, for selling on there. And uh, with supplements, it's kind of a – it's great for exposure – but it's a little bit of a, it was great for the first year, but I'm kind of getting away from it. Uh, and I'm, I'm getting with, with how difficult they're being on selling with them. And they, they're not very good to their sellers. So that is a concern with me, um, with this issue in particular, that it just should be handled in a, in a different matter. And I talked to a supervisor. They agreed completely with everything. They could see what's going on, yet they did nothing to resolve the issue. So it's one of those things. Uh, so part of owning a business and, and you got to deal with the daily struggles. It all falls. A lot of things are out of my hands at times and uh, you just got to be patient. And it, it's a constant reminder for me to uh, just take a deep breath. Everything will be okay. And uh, we got to, we got to use that mindset for a lot of things in this world we live in now. And with that, I want to go ahead before we go ahead and, and I'm going to close the show with questions this week, but I want to go ahead and uh, get into my tips of the week this week. Tips of the week. Yay. My book of the week is Mini Habits by Stephen uh, Guise. G-U-I-S-E. Stephen, Stephen, S-T-E-P-H-E-N. Guys, G-U-I-S-E. Uh, it's a book on mini habits and just baby steps. And, and sometimes the guy for him, it was setting one push up a day was his uh, thing to start working out. And what you find is when you start setting little mini goals, you actually do a lot more um, because it, we tend to get overwhelmed by, oh, I got to go to the gym. I got to get ready. I got to go. I got to be seen by other people. I got to go there for an hour or two hours. Whereas if you say, I'm just going to do one push up every day and you kind of, before you know it, you're doing 30, 40, maybe you want to do some other stuff, set small goals. And uh, it's a way to kind of trick the brain into uh, not being overwhelmed. It's almost like if you said, if you set a goal of, I'm going to read a book every day, that's a pretty challenging task. But if you say to yourself, you know what, I'm just going to read one page every day. That's a lot more feasible. And what happens usually when you read a page, you might, well, I might as well just finish the next page. Ah, shit. I might as well just do a chapter. And then, you know what I mean? Before you know it, you're doing a chapter a day, but you're only required to do a page a day. So you don't feel disappointed when you don't. If you don't, you know what I mean? If you if you only read a page a day, that was your goal. And it's much easier to do that than to read a chapter a day. But So it's setting smaller goals and getting accustomed to it. And uh, a great book. I highly recommend it. Quote of the week this week from the Quotes app. You cannot make everybody happy. You're not a nut jar. And uh, I laughed when I saw that. And uh, when you're in uh, the showbiz or you're in anything in life, you got to remember there's billions of people and everybody's minds work a little differently. We all have different backgrounds. We've all have different experiences. You know, you might like AJ Styles and I like Roman Reigns. Doesn't make us bad people. We just like two different things. Some people like Coke. Some people like Pepsi. Just the way that it is. And uh, 
So, uh, and I think that applies to, to, a, to everything in life. My nutrition tip of the week, you might have seen this on the IG, uh, bone broth collagen. I talked about my mom has been making this stuff for years and it's now gaining popularity in the supplement world. Uh, some of the benefits to it, besides tasting like shit, is uh, there's flavored ones out there too, which I'm interested in trying because just the straight up bone broth collagen that I got, I'm not going to lie, I can usually take stuff and not worry about the taste. This stuff isn't great. I've mixed it with my my ISO Hungry. It ruins the shake. I've done it just by itself. Tastes like shit. Um, I've mixed it with my tuna fish. Bad mistake. Um, wh- which I will say, eating it with tuna fish is actually better than mixing it in water. But it just takes longer to eat with water. You can at least chug it. But some of the benefits to this stuff, it heals your gut, protects your joints, improves uh, your skin to help you look younger. You sleep better, increase bone strength, aids the metabolism, and promotes anabolism, uh, which is essentially helping you with muscle mass. So, and I've seen quite a few people on the keto diet uh, take the bone broth uh, powder collagen. So I've added it in to the thin to my mix, and because Sophie has been on this from day one, and she has healed at a rapid rate, which I think is. And my mom gives her a, a cup of the bone broth every single morning. So I'm, uh, I'm hopping on the bandwagon. I'm going to see how I feel on it. And, uh, so check that out and read up on it. And, uh, and you can make your own decision on that workout fitness tip of the week. If you have a weak body part that isn't growing as quickly as other muscles by training it, uh, you can try training it more. Dr. John Barati says muscles can take seven to 14 days to fully recover, but you need a minimum of 48 hours of rest uh, to allow the muscle to recover enough, uh, before training it again and to allow for recovery and to prevent injury. And that's kind of always been the, what I've heard and in, in kind of in the fitness world is to give a muscle 48 hours, um, and something. So if you have a, a weak body part, try training it a couple times a week hard, you know, you maybe have one really, really hard day. And then another day where it's not quite as intense, maybe it's half of the workout you normally would do. Um, and, but see if that can help. Uh, and again, sometimes you just got a weak body part and there's nothing you could do, uh, with that. There really isn't. It's just kind of the way, way of the way of life. Um, but we could try our damn best to get, to catch it up as much as possible. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead guys and move on and, uh, do some questions this week. I'll do quite a few. We had, we had quite a bit on the old Instagram this week and, uh, I thank you guys as I'm tapping into my Instagram to uh, see what we got going on. And I thank you guys for joining my Instagram stories and, and chatting with you guys. I enjoy um, talking to you guys each and every week. And uh, I, I have some of the best fans in the world, and I can't thank you guys enough. Oh, I should also mention this. Uh, I would be, I, before I, I forget, uh, a shout out and thank you to the WWE they actually, and Stacy uh, DePaulo with the WWE, uh, they, with everyone we've talked about, my ankle, uh, and I had that metal in there from that original surgery, and uh, I had to get it removed. And uh, due to the insurance, uh, it being a work injury for many years ago, my insurance would not cover it. So, and, and I had to pay cash for it. And it was uh, not that it was overly expensive, but it wasn't necessarily cheap either. And, uh, I appreciate they actually covered that and uh, took care of that bill for the big guy. So thank you to the WWE for doing that. I am highly appreciative of it. And I thank you guys for taking care of that and getting that rest of that metal out of my ankle. All right, moving on. Questions. Ryback, what advice would you give to an aspiring male wrestler who only stands at five foot two, whose end goal is to wrestle all around the world, but to eventually make it to WWE? By Darshan McGuire, uh, it's just work relentlessly at your craft. Find a way to make yourself different. Uh, don't get caught up in this craze of no selling today. That's one of the things that I think, and you hear old school guys talk about it all the time. If you ever listen to the Stone Cold podcast, you'll hear it. There's nowhere to go from that, guys, as far as that goes. And, and I'm going to answer your question first before I get going on that. But learn how to sell. Every move should mean something because if you don't, there's no, 
Otherwise, you're just doing more and more moves to get to the same the same end result. So at your size, learn how to sell. Make everything, make your kicks look as good as possible. Make your punches look as good as possible. Look like you can physically hurt somebody at five foot two. I don't care if you can do flips and, and flops and all that. You don't need that to win a real fight. You need to present to people that you have a shot of winning in this illusion of a real fight. So uh, work relentlessly. And not to say you can still do all that stuff, but make your stuff, you know, look at a guy like Chris Benoit who was a little on the smaller side. He was extremely physical. You need to be more physical than the biggest guys. That's That would be my best piece of advice for you. Intensity and physicality will always sell. There will always be a place for physicality and intensity because people pay to see that. And uh, where I was getting at within the no selling and things like that, eventually if you go out there and do a match and the guy just you hit move after move and nobody sells anything, that's the current state of where wrestling is going by guys what kind of what they're doing. And we're not there yet, but that's the only way, that's where it is going. You have to sell. And, and, and it's one thing to do a little something here and there, uh, but you're finding it more prevalent and, and it's almost like a slap in the face of of ring psychology and, and everything that was built before us. And everyone has different opinions on that. But I'm telling you, there's nowhere to go from the way that it is going. You're going to hit a guy with 10 finishers to beat him? Why? What happened to one when one was good enough? That's my personal opinion. I think a lot of people would agree with that. Uh, moving on. Uh, when you won the IC title at Elimination Chamber, did you and Vince McMahon exchange any words? If so, could you tell us what they were? I've noticed in WWE clips, new champs tend to hug Vince and exchange a few short, short words with him. I'd be interested in what you and he said to one another. Thanks for everything. Keep up the great work on all your projects. Thank you very much. Yes, man, Tom. Uh, the only thing I recall, I, I would like to say that happened. I'm sure it did. I And then this is in all seriousness. I don't remember. Uh, I do remember when I got out of Gorilla, uh, a group of the guys, the boys, uh, being there and, and getting a, a standing ovation or, or a warm reception. And I was, I was actually truly shocked by that. But uh, I think that that was, uh, to me, that meant more than anything. Um, in winning the title, and I talked about this on Two Man Power Trip, and it's not an insult. I, like, every championship means something as far as, and it's always a nice gesture when you get that, but they're props. They're props to tell a story. You're not really a champion. You're just playing the role of a champion. So I, I look at it from that standpoint. So for me, the, the real reception in the back, that was a real moment uh, of respect that truly meant more to me than probably anything else in my WWE career. <clears throat> so I'm sure it did happen. I, I, I would imagine it did. I just, I don't, it was, it was kind of, to me, it meant more with the guys because they're the ones that see everything every day. So, um, and not to say that it didn't mean anything. If it did, I just don't remember. And I don't know if I blocked that out or what, but I don't, I don't remember. Um, Moving on, uh, Mr. Airman, do you still have any contact with Vince under Raw or SmackDown, and why are you not wrestling anymore? I am wrestling, just took a break for a few months, and with Sophie breaking her back, I had to take an extra month off. So uh, it's, um, but no, I do not. But I do, I've had contact with people in WWE, just not with Vince or Hunter or anybody of that nature. Looking, looking, looking. Uh, trying to find a good question here. Uh, hey, Ryback. It's a Ryback fan. Two questions. My wife wants to know what your ho hobbies are outside of eating, lifting, and wrestling. Uh, I enjoy reading and listening to audiobooks. I enjoy spending time with my dogs. Um, occasionally, if I catch a little TV, I love Impractical Jokers and Shark Tank. Um, I love doing my podcast every week. It's truly one of the the fun points of my week. And it's other things. I, again, uh, I had to chill out on this past year, boxing, jujitsu, Muay Thai, that kind of stuff. I like being physical uh, and doing stuff of that nature. I have to let my body heal and, and get to the point it needs to be before I can push myself on that aspect again. But I love bowling. I like having a good time, going to the movies every once in a while, like regular everyday shit, just like everybody else. 
Uh, I like learning though and in, 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 in growing my mind and trying to uh, evolve and understand things as well as I possibly can. Um, I kind of do a lot of the same things though on a day in and day out basis this last year and uh, in running the supplement company. It's a lot of busy work throughout the day. Even if I sit down to ice my back, I might have to do three or four emails real quick. It's just so and it, it goes that goes all the way till I go to bed. It's great though. I get to do a lot of it from home, but it's constantly addressing the customer concerns, trying to get back to my fans, my customers, and uh, and just staying active and being seen because it's very important. So um, it's quite the balance doing all of that. Uh, and my son Julian wants to know uh, what your favorite color is. I kind of went with my supplement colors, blue, yellow, and red. I'm a big fan of. Um, I don't in particularly have one in particular have one color. Um, I, I, I like color combinations too. I always like blue and orange together. I like blue and yellow together. I love blue, yellow, and red together. Things of that nature. Uh, I have a question. I have multiple accounts on social media. What app can I use to post on all of them? I remember in the past episodes, you talked about an app uh, you used to post on, uh, what's the app? Buffer. Buffer is, uh, one of the apps I use where you can put all your social media under one app and kind of control the the content you put out, um, which I use a lot for Twitter and things of that nature. Instagram is a little different. You got it, but you got it. Uh, Instagram, I believe you can schedule it on there too, actually, where you can schedule a couple posts a day. I just tend to go on Instagram and do it myself. Um, but moving on here, guys, I want to get to a few more questions. Uh, CM Punk on UFC. I, I believe he's getting a second fight. I'm happy for him. I would like to see him be successful on that. He's set out. Uh, anytime you go out and try something new, you got to commend the person. He left his comfort zone and went into an entirely different field very late. And uh, he took on a big fight for the first one. He made a lot of money on it also. But uh, I think this time maybe we'll be able to kind of see where he's at fighting somebody uh, at, at more of a level, uh, that maybe he is at. And it, I think it will be cool to see how much he's progressed if he has. And, uh, I think they can get another fight out of him. And uh, I think for him just from, uh, and we've had our differences, but I don't, again, those are what those were. This has nothing to do with what he's doing. And, uh, it would be shitty for me not to, um, want to see him succeed in something else that has nothing to do with wrestling. So. We will see, though. I don't know. I don't know what will happen with that. Uh, trying to see. I got a message from Phoenix. She is alive, so that's good to know. But she will not be on the show this week because we are wrapping up. Uh, Ryback, do you still have your complimentary WWE Network subscription? Yes, I do. Still, uh, still is very active. Uh for everyone, what is the greatest negative experience you have encountered where something positively was bigger than the negative? Um, there's multiple things. The ankle injury I've talked about again and how that all turned out being Skip Sheffield and overcoming that and getting a chance to create my myself as Ryback and come out and getting a second chance at debuting and, uh, and it working out in a, in a favorable manner for me. Uh, another thing is leaving WWE. And again, the reasons and everything and how I feel and I've expressed that and, and it is what it is, but, and, and, and I never wanted to leave, but I felt I had to, and it was a blessing that I did because I found out about this back injury that I had, that had I not left, that would have been the end of my career within six months to a year, probably. And because I would have been doing the backpack stunner still, I would not have got an MRI on my back or when I would have finally gotten an MRI on my back, it probably would have been too late. I would have needed surgery on all four discs and there would have been no overcoming that. So, um, I've always been looked over in a very good way. And, uh, so what many people would perceive to be a negative of leaving and doing my own thing was a positive for me still, but it's also been a positive in that it saved my career probably later in life and, uh, and allowed me to be able to live, uh, even with wrestling aside, live a pain-free, healthy life later on. And I've still got a little ways to go, but uh, I get better and better every week. The stem cells, and I can't stress this enough, are such a truly amazing thing we we have in this day and age. So if you have 
an injury, I, I highly recommend looking at stem cells first before opting for surgery. Because one, surgery is a trauma. And once you go there, there it, it's not, you're not always the same. And I know that because I've, and I've had multiple surgeries. Mm. So, uh, yeah, that, those would be the two off the top of my head. Look and see if we have, uh, I think that about does it for questions tonight, guys. And uh, I'm going to go ahead. We're going to wrap things up on this week's show. And again, I apologize. It's a little bit off format with everything that we've done. But uh, the gang will be back together um, here very soon. I'm trying to think of a song I haven't done yet either. Um, I've done Rolling already. I've done so many. We're going to go ahead and do Burn It Down by Linkin Park this week. Burn it down. All right, guys. For all fan mail for the Big Guy Ryback, please send to P.O. Box 752740, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89136. Check out the Feed Me More, Feed Me More Nutrition, all Ryback merchandise on Amazon merch under Feed Me More or Feed Me More Nutrition. On Amazon, we have a bunch of different shirts and sweaters and long shirts on there uh, through the Amazon merch program. Check out Feed Me More Nutrition on feedmemore.com. Amazon, eBay, and also in Las Vegas at Spartan Nutrition and Wise Chiropractic. For personal video shout outs by me, uh, check out Cameo at bookcameo.com slash the big guy Ryback. For all wrestling, professional wrestling bookings and appearances, please contact Paula at bookthebigguy at yahoo.com. Wake Up It's Feeding Time, my motivational book is available on Amazon in paperback, Audible, and Kindle formats. Fuel Meals, my personal meal prep service. FuelMeals.com. Save 15%. It's not 10% anymore. It's actually 15% uh, with the code THEBIGGUY at FuelMeals.com. It's my personal meal prep service. They have all this custom food, very lean, healthy food. They even have some stuff that's uh, a little fattier that tastes even better. Uh, but I, I'm a big fan of their chicken and uh, broccoli and steak and broccoli. Uh, I keep it pretty plain, but you could always put some seasoning and stuff on it. But it's a great way to save time uh, and eat healthy. So check out Fuel Meals, guys. Uh, social media, check me out. This podcast, at CWTBG and at Ryback22 on Twitter. At Feed Me More Nutrition on Facebook. The Big Guy Ryback22 and Feed Me More Nutrition on Instagram. And ryback 247 on Snapchat. Thank you guys very much for listening. I'll be uh, doing a, a podcast from Scotland next week at my appearances, and I'm hoping to, to line up an interview out there and have a have somebody out there do the show with me, and uh, I will get that figured out. If not, I may have to do a late show Sunday when I get back in with Phoenix and Asian Joe, um, and then get the show up a little bit later, maybe Monday or Monday night uh, the following week. But we will do our best. Uh, to try to keep everything on, on schedule as always. But thank you guys for listening. You have just listened to another episode of Conversation with the Big Guy.